see how well she climbs here. here we Sounds go. good to me. Take it up here. Yeah. I have no idea what's on the other side. Okay. We okay? Yep, keep coming hard right, and then you're just going to ease down. Yeah, here. like straight down. Here we go. <laughs> Hanging from my seatbelt here. I know, you really are hanging from the seatbelt. <laughs> Welcome to that episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We're pretty, pretty far from the garage today because I'm driving the Earth Roamer LTI. You know, we've done an awful lot of off road vehicles, uh, some pretty good, some kind of dumb. This is unbelievable. This is quite an experience. What a quality built unit this is. Based on a Ford uh, F550, it's got the 6.7 liter diesel engine about 330 horsepower, got the 10 speed transmission. But the thing that makes this different is, uh, Earth Roamer is a company started by a guy named Bill Swales, who sadly passed away not that long ago. I never got a chance to meet him. But when you see the level of work and the detail, it's pretty amazing. This does not rely on propane or generators or anything. It's got lithium ion batteries, it's got solar panels. It can go for days and days and days. Carries about 90 gallons of water, got a thousand mile range. It, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I have the gentleman who is kind of the uh, experienced guy. Let's meet Zach Rainier. Zach, come on in. Now you're the customer experience guy? I am the customer experience manager for okay. Earth So tell people what we have there. This is all this is all Ford F550, but this is all carbon fiber. It makes it a lot lighter than it would be under normal circumstances, correct? Correct, yeah. So we start with the Ford F550. Uh, we get that directly from Ford uh, in colors and other options that a customer can choose. And then we strip it down to absolutely bare frame rails uh, and we build up from there, so. But when I buy this, this obviously comes with a pretty um, like a five or seven year warranty, whatever, that all remains intact, correct? Yeah, so the Ford factory powertrain warranty, it is all still a factory powertrain. So right. factory engine, transmission, axles, everything like that is all gonna be factory, which is also really nice because that means it can be serviced at Ford dealerships across the nation. Right, right, so everything else remains stock except all these features that you add, and they're pretty right. amazing when you see them. So where do you wanna start? I guess just looking at it from it's pretty much all stock Ford from the passenger compartment, right? Now it is, except the fact that Ford never did a, uh, a rear seat that was a set of captain's chairs for a pickup truck, because oh, okay. most pickup trucks have a back wall. I thought that looked awful nice. Yeah, yeah. So we actually do a rear captain's chairs as one of our options uh, to make it so that you can actually have the pass through into the camper area. Okay, oh yeah, that's what I like. You don't have to, I mean, if it's raining or it's snow or it's, you don't have to get out and come around to get into it. You can access it from inside. Right. Okay. All right. Well, let's go around and show people what we have here. Now, normally, this would be what, a dually, right, normally? This came from the factory as a dually, and right. we swapped it to super singles. Okay. The wheels are 20-inch wheels from Hutchinson, and they are true double beadlock wheels. Now, why get rid of the, uh, the, du the dual wheel? So we build a lot for off-road performance. Right. Um, and we want to be able to fit the 43-inch tires um, because it gives us a good highway speed rating, good on-road manners, but it also allows us to do a lot off-road. Okay. So to fit that in the rear, um, as well as not wanting to displace too much weight across too many tires, we have the four. All right, very good. And it doesn't, I mean, it feels like cast, okay, cast iron. <laughs> That's pretty, th I mean, I always think of carbon fiber as being strong but somewhat flexible but this is not is this extra thickness or is something different uh, so it's a sandwich construction okay so we have a layer of carbon fiber and right. then a structural foam core okay. and then another layer of carbon fiber oh, okay that's and then that's vacuum infused all together to give us that structural rigidity yeah it, it really seems unbelievable and this is for what water or fuel that's where we fill our water okay okay all right what else oh uh, tell me about the air suspension you can also if I take it out camping and I'm on a hilly area, I can lift up one, I can get it all even, correct? Correct, so the entire truck rides on four corner independent air ride suspension. Right. And so what that allows us to do is we get a very comfortable ride going down the road and it'll even adjust as we're driving down the road. So mm -hmm. if you have a big crosswind driving across Wyoming, it's going to actually adjust for that. And then once you get to camp, you can use the four corner independent air ride suspension to actually level the truck for camp so that you don't have to drive up on leveling blocks or, or bring right. any of those things with you. So if I'm, if I'm back here playing pool, I have to worry about 
We'll have to perfect. use a hook shot. It'll be perfect. All Absolutely. Right. That's just pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, the thing I find really impressive is the level of construction. I mean, a lot of campers, it's a matter of a screwdriver and you're in, but this, this also is an amazingly thick and strong door, isn't it? Yep, so we have gone through a lot of iter different iterations of, uh, of our designs. Our door, our locking systems, everything like that. You can see we actually even have our billet door locks up here. Right. Which allows you to put in a, a case hardened bolt. So that's just, yeah, that's similar to like a trailer hitch pin. And you have them in all five of the doors so that you can lock it down for storage or something like that. And my key fob can lock everything? Your key fob controls everything, including the boxes on the back, the lockers, the entry door, the cab, everything. Now let's go around the back of the vehicle here. Cause your bottle opener, you gotta have that. Absolutely. Okay. Now let's come back here and with these big storage boxes yeah on this side we do an optional exterior kitchen so in this truck we actually have a Traeger smoker in here <laughs> let me see that I want okay to see this that's hilarious all right there you go so you've got your Traeger smoker we give you grilling tools everything like that right 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 and then in the other side this one is just open for storage, so great for firewood, um, right. you know, inflatable kayaks, whatever right. toys you okay. want to bring with you. All right. And then these are also swing out boxes here. So all we do is we just reach underneath. Oh, it unlocks, I see. And just swing it out. You can also see we have our bike racks up on top. And those are what, storage units? There? And these are going to be storage, yeah. So we'll open this up here. And you've got your upper storage. Right. With a few goodies that we provide with the truck. Wow. Okay. And what's down below? Same thing? Yep. This one's also going to be a lower storage locker. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everything you need. Everything you need. It's we try nice. and make it turnkey. And these, of course, of what? Stuck in mud, snow, that kind of thing? Yep. So those are max tracks. Right. Um, and you put them under a tire when you are stuck in the mud, stuck in the snow, really good in soft sand. So you got one for each tire? Yep. Yeah. Four on there. Cool. So up top on the corner is satellite TV. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... So you get Dish Network or Direct TV. And what's actually cool is when you get to camp and you want to turn on your TV, that will actually shoot on a mast about 12 to 18 inches up in the air to give you better cell coverage. <laughs> so you can watch Call of the Wild while you're in the wild. <laughs> All right, very cool. And you got a tow hitch? Yep. What's your toy capacity? That's got to be pretty crazy too, bro. So most of the time, um, we're limited by our GVWR. Our GVWR is 19,500 pounds. Yeah. So if you're flat towing, you're totally fine. Right. And if you have a well-balanced trailer, you're very, you're, you're okay. Um, but we don't want to add too much tongue weight just gotcha. because of the tires. Gotcha. Okay. We've got an optional rear winch in the back as well, because right. even when you're out with your friends and they have a winch on their Jeep, it's probably not big enough to pull this thing out. So. Right. You've got recovery front and back. So you can pull yourself out. Yep. Okay. And there's actually a third winch on the truck that will lower the spare tire down with a rig that assembles into the bumper so that the tire will actually come down to the ground with a push of a button and you don't have to lift it or do anything. So. Well, let's take a look at the inside. Okay. Everything moves so easy. It just locks as soon as it clicks in. Yep. There we go. Lead the way. Wow. Welcome in. Well, I'll hang here. Show me, obviously, this is all the electrics and everything in here. Yep. Yeah, so we have uh, our internet and our satellite up in here. Okay. Uh, below it is all going to be drawers meant for, like, clothing closet kind of thing. Okay. You press these and oh, that opens it? Yep. And all of them latch. So when you're going down the road, you don't have to worry about anything flying open, drawers coming flying out, anything like that. Right. Okay. Uh, and then over to this side, we have the uh, cedar closet. Okay. So it's actually hanging room for the closet. Well, let's open up and see. Yeah, there you go. So... And then one thing next to the cedar this closet, is a we have wine here. cellar. Yep, we have our wine cellar in here. And in the bottom here, you've got your wine tools. That's you. All right. And then these glasses. One thing that's nice is when you're going down the road, they're not going to clink or rattle right. or uh, break into each other. 
So what you can do is you can pull out this slot and then all of your glassware comes out. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, if you're drinking wine while driving, probably not. It's best for once you get there. Okay. Let's see the bathroom. Okay, so this is our wet bath in here. So what a wet bath is, it is a combination between the toilet and the shower, everything right. you need in there. And you can see some of our hand-built teak accents throughout as okay. well. Oh, you have a hanging, you have a shower. Yep. Yeah. In this corner here yeah. is going to be the shower. Right. And then you've got the bath sink and then the cassette toilet down oh, very there. very good. You know, this used to be a saying when I was a kid, he was so honest he gets out of the shower to take a leak. Well, now you don't have to get out of the shower and still be honest. And I think that's... For people like that, that's very important to have. Yeah, very cool. Now, what does this do? Does this hold the door open if you want? So or? this is a cool feature here, and what I'll actually do is I'm going to open both of these. Right. Oh, give you a little more privacy. Yeah. So what it is is these two will hook together and make a changing room. Right. So you have access to your dry, dry towels. You have oh, okay. access to all your clothes, everything like that, while you're in the bathroom. That's the cool part. That's the really well thought out stuff. How you keep utilizing and utilizing the same things over and over again. Oh, very neat. And of course, a couple of hooks up here. Yep. Cool. And you got a washer dryer too, right? Somewhere. Not in this model. Oh, not in this model. Oh, no. Got to pay extra for the washer dryer. And of course, you got a full sink here. Yep. And you just move this for you. And a coffee maker built in? Yep. And yeah. you can pick between uh, Keurig and Nespresso, other different types of coffee right. makers. And then you got a stove here, electric? Uh, yeah, induction cooktop. Now, how does that cook? Is there a fan that pulls it out or? Uh, so what we have is a main fan up in the bunk area right. up there, and then we have the ability to have the windows open, and uh, and that gets any of the moisture, condensation, gotcha. things like that okay. out. Now here, this looks kind of cool. What is that? A, that's a microwave on top? Yeah, so it's a microwave, a convection oven, a uh, broiler, an air fryer, a lot of different things. Oh, okay. So, and then below it here, we have our 12-volt fridge. So, nice part about the 12-volt fridge is that it doesn't have to be level like a propane fridge or a three-way right. fridge or anything like that. We've got fridge and freezer here. Well, this is a freezer, right? Yep. And this is a fridge. Okay. Yep. Nice size. Now, one thing that's nice here in our second drawer oh. is silverware right. that locks in similar to the dishes. So, it's not all rattling about, yeah. Your knife block there. And should you be attacked, you can lunge. Yeah, that's and then exactly put right. Put the knife back in, lunge at the attacker, and go back and finish your wine. Perfect. Okay. And this one is a, a pantry. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, look at that. We'll certainly utilize the space nicely. Plates and bowls and everything up here. Yep. And this is the security camera screen? Yeah, so we have ghost security cameras on the truck. They're on uh, four it, sides. Like 360 kind of deal? Uh, so they have uh, IR capabilities, so you can see at night really oh, easily. Um, and they're always going to be recording, so they're recording both locally and they're uploading to the cloud as well. So we have the ability to track and uh, watch what's going on around the truck from anywhere in the world. Are there motion detectors too? Does somebody yep. approach? Oh, really? Okay. Let's yep, see. so it can actually alert you and let you know. It can send you a text or something like that if somebody's, you know, messing around uh, behind right. your truck. And big screen TV here? Yep. So no, why would you look at nature when you could watch uh, a movie? Exactly. Well, so we have a lot of customers who, uh, who use the truck uh, full time and they right. actually they'll work from the truck a lot so a lot of customers will actually sit at the dinette and use that as a secondary monitor right right okay then more just general space up here and across the windows open yep is that security camera also no so this is actually our digital control system here oh, okay so our digital control system uh actually controls everything in the truck from right there oh i see right. it can also be controlled from an ipad right. if you're carrying an ipad and there's also another screen like that up in the bunk area okay and you have these lithium-ion batteries, which are capable of running at 24 hours a day for a week, three days, two days? It like. depends on, you know, how you cook. It depends on things like that, right. um, how much you're using the air conditioning. But if you went out um, on a Friday and come back on a Sunday, you wouldn't be dead. You, no, you'd that, probably that. still be full. Oh, yeah. So, uh, that's what I mean. so it's a reasonable amount. Plus, the solar panels will recharge during the day. Obviously. Correct. Yep. And about as much power as what? As much as a Tesla battery, would you say? Uh, it's a little bit less stored power than a Tesla battery. Right. Um, but 
we designed the system to essentially function like you would in your normal house. Right, so, and you're not powering an engine, so you're not using tremendous amounts of electricity. Right, exactly. And our heat is not coming from electric. That's coming from diesel. Oh, okay. So we're not having to create heat with, uh, with electric. We're only using it for the, the household appliances and things like that. So what you find is... And air conditioning. And air conditioning. Right. So what you find is it, it functions like your house. You so know, you, the diesel heater, how does it, is it a furnace and it lights? Correct. Yep. Oh, so see. it's a uh, it's a diesel airtronic. So okay. it is uh, burning clean air and uh, pushing exhaust out underneath the rear bumper, so you don't get any moisture in here, no condensation. Mm -hmm. It's just dry heat. Electric fan. Yep. Which, okay. Okay. So it's not, but it's not a motor. No. No. Just uh, just burn. So you don't you don't hear anything. Correct. Right. Okay. Well, that's pretty. Then of course you have a little couch here. Yep. Right. Now those could, does that fold into something or is it just so this will come out to be a bed as oh, well it does. okay um, but one thing that's also really nice is if we move these cushions here yeah we can actually flip up to get oh. more counter space oh I see like having a big dinner party you exactly want to have 30 40 people over you put that up there then. okay we've done a taco setup make your own tacos oh, yeah, and lay yeah. it all out with all the ingredients so well, and then cool. same thing behind the front cushion yeah. as well and then the sofa base will come out and give you a little more extra room for sleeping. The thing I really like, which you can't do in most, when you put a shell, you can't access the driver's compartment from the from the camp, but you can right. in this, obviously. Yep, so we have the pass-through into the Ford. Um, right. It's nice because, uh, especially in the inclement weather, you don't want to have to get out in the rain or in right. the snow and come around to your camper and right. have muddy boots. You just climb on through. Right, right, okay. Oh, cool. Let's put that back down. Let's okay. Put things back to where they were. Let's turn around and show them the bed. That's kind of cool. Let me ask you a dumb question. Now, in a vehicle, if this is moving, can people be sitting back here and doing things? Not legal. Not legal. That's what I. Right. That's like not having your kid strapped into a car seat. Right. Exactly. Kind of so we don't have legal um, car seat or uh, seat belts back here. Right. Right. Um, so you can't legally be riding back here, um, but you know a lot of people when they just got to run back and grab a soda out of the fridge or something right, like right. that. It's nice on okay. a road trip. And of course, here's the bed. Does that TV swing around? It does. So the TV will swing out to the position right about here, <laughs> and then it'll also actually come down and yeah. be above the table right oh, here. Oh wow! Okay. So you can be sitting at yeah. the couch and watching a movie. Okay. And then later go upstairs to bed. You see? And, and speaking of upstairs, you got stairs right here. Yep. Let's see, where's our, uh... can you get that pan? Yeah. And this gets you. Most comfortable way to get up into bed. Right, just move and walk upstairs. That's very cool. Let me put this back up. Don't get your fingers caught in there. Boy, you certainly utilize space. Pretty amazing. We try. Next to the ladder here, there's under bunk storage, so there's long storage racks underneath the mattress. Okay. And of course, you can close that. And... Yep. So all of the windows have screens and bug shades right. um, that will close so that you can have privacy if you need. You can black it out when you need. Um, and then all of them open as well, including this. And this is actually our roof hatch that's access up to the roof. Oh, okay. And I, I noticed it looked pretty sturdy coming in. You know, a lot of campers, you've got a wire and you can open the door and get in. But this looks like it's pretty, yeah, pretty so, secure. Yeah, uh, so everything, um, everything is tied into the Ford key fobs. So when you have your keys, uh, you can just lock it and unlock it like you would your normal oh. truck. That opens the entry door, the lockers in the back, the swing out boxes. And we also have a security mode up here, which is pretty nice. We can click this button. And what that is, is when you hear a noise in the middle of the night and you don't know what it was, you click that button and it locks everything down, turns on all of the exterior LEDs, retracts anything outside that might be in the way from you being able to leave. Right. Turns on that screen if you had turned it off for sleeping, it gets you ready to go. Wow, okay. Pretty amazing. And obviously you can sleep all night with the air conditioner on without, yep. you're not gonna wake up with a dead battery in the morning. No. No, no. Cool. How do you know how much battery you have left? Does that come up there too? It does. So right now we're still 100% full. Right. And it shows us right there. And this also shows us how much solar we're bringing in right now. So because we're 100% full, the solar only needs to bring in about 24 amps. Right, okay. 
And what's it capable of bringing in? What's the matter? Um, so we have 1,360 watts of solar on the roof. But I mean, when you're pulling in, how many per hour? Uh, so we can get about a, a flow of about 100 amps coming oh, okay. in. Okay. Oh, it's impressive. Well, yeah, it really is. This is. And this is obviously to help you get in and out of bed. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing. We have a gun safe up here. Okay. This is an optional accessory. All right. And then there's longer storage in there as well. This whole cabinet is something that's optional that um, some customers decide they want that much bigger a mattress. And I imagine there is a, a regular safe you can get too. You could put money in valuables. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. We also have other hidden safes throughout the truck. Right, right, okay. And it's really comfortable. I mean, this is a little comfortable couch. It's really funny. So we let customers pick a lot of the options in this truck. Um, so you can pick things like your wood species, your wood color. You, we do pre-distressing, so right. we can actually make it look a little more antique, right. which is also nice because if you end up doing damage to the truck after the fact, just normal wear and tear living in the truck right. uh, blends in. Um, you can pick things like materials for cushions, so different leather options. Is this um, pretty much the standard color. If you were making a model to put on the show, people could come in and just buy this one off the floor? Or is every one of them Every custom? one of them is custom made for okay. each customer. So um, we don't really build many spec units right. where we decide the options right, because right. customers really like to get exactly, it's like building a custom home. Right, right, sure. Well, it is a custom home. Jeez. I mean, it's it's expensive, but you see what, you, I mean, you see what it costs. And again, carbon fiber outside. Yep. So the entire okay. shell is carbon fiber. It's a one-piece carbon fiber shell. Right. And this is about 15,000 pounds, which seems remarkably light considering, because the standard truck is probably 8,000 Yeah. Pounds? So we're actually, in this truck, we're at about 17,500. OK. okay. Um, and yeah, the normal chassis is going to be uh, well, under I guess, nine. I guess what I'm asking was, if this was steel or aluminum instead of carbon fiber, it would be... It would be much heavier. About, what, 800 pounds heavier? Uh, probably more than that. Yeah. So we used to build in uh, fiberglass. Right. And it was a very similar shell and a similar way we built it, but it was fiberglass. And uh, they were between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds heavier. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, so obviously it helps your mileage. So yep. what are you looking at, about 12? Uh, we get about 10 to 12. 10 to 12, okay. Yep. And with uh, 95 gallons of fuel, that's little over a thousand miles range. 95 gallons, so that's uh, that's diesel fuel, that's, what is that, six pounds per gallon? And water is what, eight pounds a gallon? I believe water is eight and right. diesel is seven, so. Okay, and gasoline is six. Yes. Yeah, that, I, yeah that's what it is. So you're carrying, Jesus. A lot of weight and fluids. A lot of weight and fluids, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but and a thousand mile range, that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, it's nice when you don't have to stop for fuel. You right. can just keep going. And well, you can drive to a state where, not like California, drive to Arizona, fill it up, and drive it back, and you're fine. Absolutely. You still have some gas left over. Yeah. yeah. Makes cool. it nice for the longer expeditions. We yeah. have a lot of customers who go to Alaska in these trucks, and there's several times where you are a couple hundred miles in between fuel stops, but when you have a thousand miles range, it... Yeah. It's never between really standard four seasons or Motel 6. I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean, obviously, it's crazy expensive but if you want the best i mean that's what's great about america you can get whatever you want you know not everybody can afford this but everybody would probably want it but those that can it's a quality piece you can really enjoy and immensely practical well before i get too comfortable let's take it for a ride all right let's do it that air suspension is nice I mean, obviously, you can feel you're going over bumps, but yeah. it's not like a shot in the kidneys. You know? Right. And it will actually get significantly better. Um, right now, we are not riding on our correct shocks. Right. Um, we're having King build us a custom set of shocks for this, which is what we have done uh, up until this point. Right. We've run custom Kings. However, this is an all-new suspension for us um, in terms of this current layout. Right. So our old custom King shocks don't work for it, so King's currently building us a new set. Gotcha. And the width of the tires, track this, is all stock, right? Uh, it is a little bit wider. Is it a bit wider? Yep. 
You don't put wider fenders on there, do you? No. We do. Oh, you They're do? all okay. custom built in house. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so the same composite shop we have in house that builds the shell builds things like our fender flares, our, um, our fuel cups, our entire bathroom, all the walls and the mold and everything. But the truck itself runs off the standard 12 volt battery that comes with the vehicle. Right? Correct, yes. Now we are charging the camper while we're driving. Right. So the alternators are going to be charging the truck. That's what one of the reasons that it allows us to not have a generator on board. Right. Is as we're driving, we're charging, and then when we get to camp, solar is charging. Right. And anytime we need it, we can always just start the truck. It's fun because nobody can tell what it is from the outside. It looks like some sort of armored car or military vehicle or something. Right. Like that. We get that question a lot. Yeah. You know, we get asked if we build them for the military. And right. If you saw the inside, it's uh, a luxury home off road. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the things that we really strive for when we build this truck is we want it to be capable of camping four seasons year right. round. Right. So, um, this is capable of all of the water systems working and everything like that well into the winter, all the way through the winter. Uh, we have customers who live in them full time in winter conditions. I think those are called divorce guys. Yeah. <laughs> so when the wife throws you out of the house, you just take your own house with you. The driveway is just as comfortable. Right, exactly. So, so um, I imagine you have a, obviously in the winter, so the, the water is constantly heated. Yeah, so uh, right now we are actually heating the water by driving. Right. We have okay. coolant from the engine that is making its way to the back yeah. of the truck and actually heating the water tank. Now, um, like a hybrid car, can I plug this in at home to charge up these batteries when solar is not available? Yep. So you can either do it at home uh, in storage or right. um, when you're, if you want to take this to a campground, you can take it to a campground and still have all of your normal hookups city water, um, shore power, things like if that. If I don't use this for weeks, sometimes months at a time, do I leave it plugged in to keep everything going? Yep, yeah. all the charging systems. Just like board. an electric car. Exactly. Let's see how well she climbs here. here we Sounds go. good to me. Take it up here. Yeah. I have no idea what's on the other Hang on a minute. Okay. Can you see anything? Yep, looks like you're just gonna come a little bit right. A little bit right. Yep, a little bit more right. Keep coming to the right. Hard right. Are we okay? Yep, keep coming hard right, and then you're just going to ease down. Yeah, here. like straight down. Here we go. <laughs> hanging from my seatbelt here. I know, you really are hanging from the seatbelt. <laughs> so on board, we also have systems that when you're in cold weather, it will keep the the truck from actually freezing and all the plumbing systems. So right. when it senses that the water in the truck is getting too cold, it will automatically start circulating the water throughout the truck so that we don't have to worry about like a tank freezing or lines or anything like that. And one thing you'll notice, um, and you can sometimes see it in your mirror, is it looks like the box is actually moving independently right. of the chassis, and right. that's by design. Yeah. So the Ford chassis flexes quite a bit, right. and we don't want to transmit those flexing forces into the shell and create any kind of cabinetry issues or anything right. like that. So we actually have designed a tri-mount pivot mounting system that has the box mounted on what looks kind of like a real big seesaw in the back yeah. so that our box, our camper can actually pivot independently of the frame. And as much as the frame twists, just like that, we don't run into any issues. So the water system for the shell is set, does, does not circulate through the engine. Correct. But you only do brand new vehicles. If I had a two-year-old F550, could I bring it in and get it done or no? Nope. So we deal directly with Ford. So right. when you purchase a vehicle, you get the entire package all right. at once. Right. Now, do you have like a, I mean, every every automobile has a car club. Is there sort of a, a group of guys that go out as a unit and camp or anything like that? Or? Yeah, so we actually have an adventures program. Right. Um, that's one of the favorite parts I have about my job is my job is to come up with uh, group adventures right. for our customers right. and actually take them out into the wild and show them how to use their trucks, show them what they're capable of, um, take them on guided trails, and show them some really cool... Let's see if we can climb this hill. Here we go. 
we show them really cool destinations that, uh, that they never would have thought they could have taken their truck. Like a lot of customers who wouldn't necessarily try using this hill here. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Yeah, so, so when you have an idiot like me who goes up on a hill that you shouldn't be on. Okay, let's see, here we go. Oh, it handles it pretty well, look at that. Yeah. Pretty cool. So we take groups of owners out yeah. on these adventures and expeditions, and we show them how to use their trucks. Um, and it's also really fun because you get to meet all different types of people who right. own earth drummers, and everybody's sitting around the campfire talking about the trip that we just had, the day we had out on the trail, and sharing stories and their favorite places to go camping. So we just finished a trip not too long ago that was going through Moab, Utah. Right. And right. we did. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. We did about just short of a week completely off the grid, driving through the desert, self-sufficient in our earth roamers. We never saw a campground once. Wow, no problems. Nope. One big pilgrimage for our customers. Yeah. Is how, a how, lot many, of, how many trucks typically go on in an event like that? Um, so we sometimes do small groups, uh, four or five trucks. Right. Uh, most we've ever had was we did one that had, uh, I believe it was 46 trucks. Wow. We brought 46 trucks out and we did day trips and uh, took everybody wheeling and showed them showed them things like a tip over angle and how close that is and how to change right. a spare tire. We teach classes on recovery, you know, how to use a winch, how to get yourself out of a situation when you're off-road. Trying to give them the tools that they need to really go off the grid and hey, be self-sufficient. And you had guys tip them over? One was tipped. One was tipped? Yeah, it was tipped in Alaska. And what happens there? Do you just ride it and keep going or They no? got winched back over. Um, I believe they broke a dish. And Give me one dish. Like dish? No, uh, oh. a dinner plate. Oh, oh dinner plate. Oh, dinner. Oh, um, an actual dish. And uh, rolled it back over. This was in Alaska and drove it all the way back to Colorado. Wow. There you go. Plus, with satellite and Wi Fi, if you are way out in the middle of somewhere, you can always reach somebody. Absolutely. So, there's a lot of different systems on the truck that are communication systems. So, we do things like. Um, 5G internet built into the truck that acts just like your home Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, we've got satellite TV. We have got satellite communication. We've got ham radios, GMRS radios, a lot of different things. You know, when I was a kid, well, not a kid, I was a young guy in my 20s. Somebody gave me a Breitling watch, and it had, it was like a pilot's watch. If you crash, you turn the stem, and you pull out this long antenna, and then you could make a call yeah. for help, but you could only use it for an emergency. If you ever used it for anything other than an emergency, you'd lose the watch and you'd be fined like 10,000. You know, it's just some, some crazy yeah. Sort of thing, yeah. But now that's pretty much standard on everything now. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to stay in communication off the grid yeah. nowadays. Well, it's perfect for survivalists. You must have a lot of those guys, you know. We have some of those guys. We've had some interesting requests from people who uh, are self-proclaimed preppers. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Now, if your air suspension popped the hose and leaked, the whole thing went down, would your tires be rubbing on the inner fenders, or could you still drive it? It'd just be a bit more of a rough ride. It would be a rougher ride, uh, but there are bump stops, internal bump stops right. in the bags that keep uh, the suspension so that you're not actually rubbing on anything. Right. Um, you know, maybe if you were to take a very tight corner when you were fully compressed or something like that, you might rub a little, but nothing the truck can't handle. And is the F550 only available with a diesel? Uh, we only offer the trucks with a diesel. You don't do gas motor? Right? We do not, no. Is there a reason for that? Um, the diesel appliances in the back. Um, oh, I see, yeah. So we have our diesel air heater, and right. we also have a diesel water heater. So um, we're not using electricity to heat anything. Um, also, diesel's a little bit more efficient when we're talking about heavy weights like this. Right. So we get the 10 to 12 miles per gallon in this, driving down the road, which 10 to 12 miles per gallon in your luxury home is uh, is not bad. Yeah, for your house truck. getting, for your car, it's terrible. For, right. for your house, oh, it's great. House gets 20, 12 miles per gallon. Yep. Don't have to stop for fuel very often. No. I drove a truck from Dallas to Denver. Didn't need to stop at all. Just had to really? stop because uh, because I was tired, not the truck. What is that, a thousand miles? That's about 800 miles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you just sleep in the vehicle, right? Yep. You can pull over, sleep whenever you want. 
you can pull over. Can, make you, a, can you pull into a rest stop and sleep in the vehicle without getting rousted? Uh, you can. Um, you do get a lot of attention in yeah. these off-road, on-road, uh, truck stops, gas stations. You get a lot of people who come up to you and ask, you know, what is that thing? That's crazy. Yeah, well, I like it because it's, it just looks like an armored vehicle or some kind of military vehicle. We had one customer who was a uh, higher profile customer that didn't want to be bothered when he was out on the road. Right. And so we put, in a, we put in a PA system for him. Okay. So that- Get away from the vehicle. Exactly. <laughs> How long was the sort of gestation period for one of these things from, you know, making out of carbon fiber? How much testing did you do? Finding out of the cracks, and, you know, all that kind of thing. So we spent several months uh, testing our first few trucks when they came out uh, in the carbon fiber model. But one thing that we've also done is we have, you know, the company was started in 1998. We have over 20 years experience and over right. 300 vehicles on the road of R&D, let's say. So um, when this one came out, uh, we actually sent the plans for this and the shell molds uh, to a military contractor that actually tests structural rigidity of boxes. Right. Who tested the, uh, you know, the G-forces that this truck could take from the side and the top to make sure that we weren't going to have any issues with that. Um, we also, we're always constantly developing. Every truck is going to come out a little bit different. Um, and, you know, I like to say that we have had 20 years of research and development because every time we learn something new, we get to experience, okay, maybe let's change this design or let's do this differently. And we've gone through several iterations of a lot of these designs. Has this got a turbo on it, this motor? It does. Yeah, I can feel it. Yep. Yeah, when that when that turbo kicks in, it's uh, it will definitely go. Have you seen like the electric Hummer? Have you seen any of those? Yet? I have. Yep. It's impressive, isn't it? It is. I like the uh, the crab walking feature. Yeah, I know. Sideways. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to see. Is that something you guys would move into? Moving into other platforms like that, we're always working on new stuff and we're always developing new products. Um, and it's really hard to see what we're going to be doing in the future, but we know that we're going to always try and build the best. We see a platform like a lot of people will ask us about all electric platforms. Yeah. We are exclusive to Ford now. Is that right? right now we are exclusive to Ford. Well, they've got that electric F-150 coming out, so an electric yep. 550 can't be far off. Yep. So what's my, uh, if I decide I want one of these and I order it, how long do I wait? So we build about 45 to 50 trucks a year. Right. Um, and we've got our next 35 slots filled. Right. Which means that... Um, That's at least a year. Right now, we're about 10 months out. Oh, okay. So if you placed an order today, we could give you an exact delivery date 10 months from now. Right, okay. And one thing that I always like to mention because um, I think it really shows in the product is the, the team that builds it. So we have a very passionate team in Colorado that builds all of these trucks by hand. Right. Um, all of the beautiful woodwork you see in the back of the truck is all hand built by some of the best woodworkers, cabinet builders, yeah. just craftsmen. Our, you know, we have welders, we have an upholstery team, we have everybody who's just, they're artists and they're passionate about what they do and, and they love building earth roamers. I think all of us, when we when we're building them, are looking at it from the lens of being an aspiring earth roamer owner. Right, Something right. that, you know, we do it how we would want to do it if it was our truck. Sure. So we have a team of about 110 right now, 110 employees building the truck, uh, and everybody's putting their hands on it. And it's way. sort of been under the radar, because I didn't really hear about it until fairly recently. I would not have guessed you're in business since 98. Yeah, we've, um, we've definitely accelerated production recently. Um, and, you know, we, a lot of our owners choose to be private. Yeah. Um, they choose not to, to talk too much about what they're doing. But one of the things I always like to say is, um, you know, people say, well, I don't see them on the road very much. You say, well, yeah, because they're not meant to be on the road. Now, okay. if you go way off the grid, you may find a roamer. And you might not notice it, you know. Absolutely. So, now, have any used ones shown up on the market? Like, would you guys buy one back? Yep. Oh, I see. So, we have what we call our pre roamed process. Right. And uh, pre roamed earth roamers are trucks that uh, pre -roamed, are. Pre roamed, I like that. Yeah. Um, they are coming back to us, and a lot of the time it's because customers are choosing 
to build a new vehicle right. and they're trading up essentially. Um, and so our pre-roamed market is where we do a full inspection of the vehicle. Um, we do all of our own in-house service, so our service team inspects the vehicle, brings it back up to the earth roamer standard, and then we will market it with a, with a new warranty. Now what is the uh, most mileage you've seen on a used one? Several hundred thousand miles. Oh yeah? Yeah. There are some trucks that I haven't seen in a very long time because they're out on adventures. Right. But I hear from the owner every once in a while. Um, they may reach out and ask a question or order some parts or something like that. And uh, every time they call, they're calling from somewhere different. We like to live vicariously through our owners and yeah, the adventures yeah. they have. You know, one of our owners um, actually was doing a South America trip. And, um, and once they finished their South America trip, they decided that they wanted to ship it back to the United States instead of driving all the way through, especially trying to cross the Darien Gap. Right. Um, and it shipped to the wrong location. It shipped, it went on the wrong ship and it went to Europe. Oh, geez. So next thing we know, that customer says, okay, I'm gonna go roam Europe for a while. Oh, that's funny. Well, the thing I like is that it sells itself. It's not a vehicle I've ever seen advertised. Have you guys ever taken out ads? Um, not very many. Like yeah. you said, they, they kind of sell themselves and we find that um, those who know about Earth Roamer are coming back to us and they're coming back to us time and time again. Yeah, I mean, that's what I like. I heard about it through other fans. And okay. I said, oh, let's find one of those, you know, yeah. as opposed to about seeing, it's the most amazing thing, you know, you don't get all that kind of nonsense. Yeah. So thanks for bringing this to us. Uh, it's really a, a fascinating vehicle and the level of workmanship on it is really, really impressive because I see a lot of just quick stuff. It's just, yeah. you know, I see a lot of six wheel trucks and things. Where do you go with that? Yeah. You know, they're just street vehicles. They don't, yeah. they're not capable of doing what this does. And this is actually a practical vehicle. Like you say, you can, you can live in it on a trip and it's, yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Thanks. I really appreciate you and letting us bring it out. And it's made in America by Americans. So there, what do you want? Absolutely. Proud team of craftsmen. Yeah, imported from Detroit to Colorado. Exactly, exactly. right. Exactly. There you go. Hey, I'll see you guys next week. I'm going camping. Mm-hmm. <laughs>